In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, me and my brother James Barlow, we are going to discuss and share our thoughts on the standouts from the 2024 McDonald's All-American Game, which features a lot of prospects who we are going to be talking about a lot at the top of the 2025 NBA Draft. I want to get James's thoughts on the 25 class based off of what we've seen from the McDonald's All-Americans. And of course, who stood out and maybe who disappointed a little. Stay tuned. Big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board podcast your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board. And I got my brother with me, who is the VP of NBA Big Board. Still haven't come up with an official title, but I mentioned it in the last few episodes. I think this is going to be a summer of separation. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up. So if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please subscribe, like, share, comment. Make sure that you click the bell so you can be notified every time that we drop an episode. And also, if you're not subscribed to NBA Big Board, the newsletter, check it out. I just released an article on Dink Pate, who I think would have been in the 2024 McDonald's All-American game if he didn't classify up and play in the G League. And in this article, I had a sit down interview with Dink and we just talked about his unique path now that the G League Ignite has folded. And we just talked about some of the options and decisions for next year. So check it out. NBA Big dot com also had an article that came out where James and I, we shared our thoughts on some guys who we thought hurt and helped their draft stock in the Sweet 16 and Elite 8. So it's a lot of content coming out. I mean, for me, it's podcast, newsletter. I mean, I'm I'm all in on this NBA draft stuff. So if you love the NBA draft, subscribe to the NBA Big Board newsletter and the Locked On NBA Big Board podcast. All right, let's get right into it. Last night, the McDonald's All-American game. You know, there's a lot of hype and buzz about this 2024, or I'm sorry, 2025 NBA draft class. I think a lot of the buzz is created because people are saying the 2024 draft class is so weak. So just overall, based off of what you've seen from 2025, from watching the scrimmages and the games, what is your overall thought on next year's draft class? I feel like there's a lot to look forward to for next year's draft class. You got different kinds of players. You got point guards, shooting guards. You know, you got wings. Uh, you got the big Derek Queen, who looks really, really interested out there. And then also, I mean, you got guys coming back. But with this 2025, like these freshmen, it was very pleasing to see the different levels of talent out there the other night. What do you, what, what do you think's the biggest level of, of- – Difference. I mean, I think this class is really hyped. I think the Cooper flag hype is I think it's going to be hard for him to live up to those expectations based off of, you know, just the hype surrounding him. And I think him and I mean, there's some other guys that are really good, but I think he's like the guy that's drawn the most attention from this class. Mm hmm. And do you think this class can live up to the hype? Because right now the expectations are, are, are pretty high right now. Yeah, the expectations are, are really, really high, but it's going to be helpful, I guess you can say, because we say that Cooper Flag is the consensus number one, right? And we'll get to see him two, three times a week on TV here in the States, whereas, you know, this draft, the 2024 draft, a lot of people have Alex Sarr going number one. And unless you're up, you know, at the crack of dawn watching those games in Australia, you're not getting the same, like, day-to-day effect from yeah watching him so with, with flag you'll you'll see every day or you know there'll be interactions with him and then like that loaded class from duke so it won't just be him so you'll have malouch out there playing with him and then also even with uh this rutgers class they have the number two and the number three player in this in the class on the same team so i think that will feed into the hype again um i think flag is probably the consensus number one but I might uh, have some takes for you. I'm still gathering information on Mr. Cooper Flag. All right. So let's just go with last night's game. Who stood out to you the most? Derek Queen. It's hard hey. to deny his talent, man. Every game I've ever seen him play, he hoops. It was a game, I want to say, I don't know if it was last year, the year before, against Sunrise. He was killing. I mean, they couldn't stop him. 
And the way he played in the McDonald's game last night reminded me of Zebo in the McDonald's game. I don't know if it was 2000, 2001. We, I think he just came off the bench and he just dominated the game. He just put the ball in the basket, right place, right time, rebounds, running the floor, soft touch around the rim. But Queen is a really, really good passer. I feel like he slimmed down some. I thought he was a lot yeah. heftier before. There's a lot of people that I've talked to that felt like he's a guy that's going to really dominate the high school level, but his game may not translate to the NBA because he's a below the rim finisher. You know, he just doesn't have the same physical tools that that gets people really excited. But well, I here's think, my, I think he can play, man. I think Sweet. he can hoop. Yeah, and here's my thing. Okay, so we we can sit here and say, obviously, he's not Nikola Jokic, but Jokic is a below-the-rim guy, right? You scale that down. You say Demonis Sabonis, definitely a below-the-rim guy, right? We can even scale it down just a little notch. Shangun is a below-the-rim guy. So when are we going to give an American center the benefit of the doubt for being a below-the-rim guy? Again, I need to do some more research on Dairy Queen, but like, what if he's the next one to do it? Because you you see, he has he's slippery in the post, right? Uh, he's got great touch. He can great handle hands. the ball some. Great hands, ball. and that's not yeah. just on 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 offense. That's on defense too. Like he was jumping screens, and he got a couple steals. So you know, it's it's early, but like, when are we gonna give an American back to the basket big who can't jump over a sheet of paper? The same props that we're gonna get a year, that we give the European guys. Who was the last one? Okafor. Yeah, he couldn't. Well, he couldn't defend. Okafor had a. He was cold on the block. He still is tough on the block. And then I thought he slimmed down too much, which kind of took a little bit away from his mm-hmm. his advantage. Who else stood out to you in this game? I know for me, Queen was a guy that I thought he would come in and play really well because he just has a nose for the basketball. And just does some really good things. For me, I'm going with the hometown guy, Trey Johnson. He has he's impressed me. I've always, you know, been a fan of his game. You put me on to him early. Say that again. You put me on him early. Okay. I think All what right. was it like a, a game against Kaysen? Look, he his sophomore year, he went to Lake Highlands. Uh they played Richardson. Richardson had Kaysen Wallace. They had Ryland Griffin. Richardson is always good. They win the district title basically every year for the past like eight nine years and he was a sophomore i didn't go to the game but you know the little homies gave me the huddle and uh, i watched the game and i texted roth that night i was like yo there's this sophomore from leg highlands he was the best player on the floor that night for sure they had nothing for him and you know here we are what was that Three years later? Yeah, here we are. Three years later. He's a McDonald's All-American. I think he's legit. Huh? Two years later. Is it two? He was a sophomore. (laughs) You're right. Two years later. Look, he's legit. And I'm not saying I found him, but like I told you about him. Now, you told me about him early, and then I've had a chance to watch him and witness him play. I've I mentioned it before. I'm not going to mention the names, but I've seen them frying some guys in the pre-draft process. I'm talking like frying them. But there's two things that stood out to me from watching him over the years and watching him, I'd say, like this season, is one, he's increased his range. Like he could shoot threes, but he was deadly like mid-range. Like he was a tough mid-range shooter. Like, I mean, I'm talking Mm -hmm. step backs, reverse pivots, fadeaways. He just had amazing touch on the mid range, and now he's extended it to where the three ball looks real easy. Like it comes off his hand really easy. But he's improved as a passer. Like I always thought he could pass. Did you see the left handed hook? The left hand hook threw? pass early in the game to, but like when I watched him last summer, it was actually about about this time last year. It was like a, I guess like the first big AAU weekend. I went and watched him, and Cooper Flag played on the same the same weekend, but they played on different great levels like Cooper was playing 16 mm-hmm. and Trey was playing 17. The game looked so easy to him, but I was impressed by his passing. And I think he's getting even better as a passer, which I think is going to go a long way in helping his NBA draft stop because he didn't have the best summer playing for the, for the U S team last summer. And I was wondering, like, I was like, man, this guy, he's either going to like be this super gifted 
high school score whose game may not translate all the way because he has a heavy diet of mid-range contested pull-ups. But from what I've seen at the end of this season and what I saw the McDonald's games and so on, Trey Johnson is going to be just fine. All right, so you mentioned a guy who has a, a high school star with a heavy diet of mid-range pull-ups. To me, that sounds like Ace Bailey. All right, when we return, I want to talk a lot about Ace Bailey. I like his game, but I got a comparison who he plays like. Some people are going to be mad about this. I got one for you, too. <laughs> I got one, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about Ace Bailey. We still got to talk a little bit about Cooper Flag. There's some other guys that I want to talk about that stood out. But let's talk about eBay Motors because passion, drive, and patience, that is the formula for winning championships, and it is also what keeps your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle, to level it up to peak performance, whether it's superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. If you're in the speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts to choose from. Your ride or die will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, the part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you can get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber, not cash. And with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it is easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. And the eBay guaranteed fit is only available for U.S. customers. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN? Well, I don't think a lot of you are watching Fox because their ratings are tumbling based off of what I read. But I wonder, is it because people are yelling and screaming all day? And if you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting, then you can make the switch to Locked On Sports today which is a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all of the screaming, yelling, fussing, fighting, and fake topics. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. It is streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, we'll be left off. We kind of talked a little bit about Ace Bailey. We didn't go into details. We, we, we were getting there, and I knew there was this, this. It was going to turn into a long segment, but Ace Bailey is the depending on who you ask, the number two prospect in this class. Some people think he's number one. Some people think he's number three. He's going to Rutgers. Extremely talented. I think he's a very gifted athlete and scorer. However, however, I think he's too gifted to settle for contested. I mean, his game is almost predictable. He's going to give you a couple dribble moves, and then he's going to stop, and he's going to pull up and shoot. Now, I'm a big fan of guys that can shoot pull-up jumpers, stop on the dime, and get to their spots. But for him, I'm like, dude, you can probably get to the free throw line 10 times a game at the high school level with the physical tools, athleticism. And, I mean, he just takes a lot of difficult shots. I felt like in the game... He was trying to prove that he's better than Cooper Flag. So every time he got the ball with Cooper Flag on him, you knew, all right, two dribbles is going up. And Cooper Flag knew that too. Yeah, I, I felt like I mean, neither one of them had like standout performances. No, not at all. I mean, I think both of them were like they they weren't efficient at all from the floor. Let me let me pull up the numbers here. I think Flag was three for nine in either the scrimmage or the uh, game, and then one game, one of them he was like two for seven. So Ace yesterday good... he was three for nine. Yeah, and there's the thing: Cooper Flag is a phenomenal athlete. Four of his nine shots were threes, so he finished with. Eight points, six rebounds, and then Ace Bailey was two for seven. He got to the free throw line two times, but he had six points, five rebounds. Not monster performances you'd expect to see from the top. From one and two. One yeah. and two. And I guess I'm like, my most memorable McDonald's game was 95. That oh, was. Man, bro. Now, you don't I remember, I used to watch the VHS tape over and over. It was I, I Kevin a lot of Garnett. G. Yeah. Kevin Garnett, Vince Carter, Antoine Jameson, Tractor Trailer, 
Sham God, Marbury. Paul Pierce? Paul Pierce. Like I used to watch that tape over and over. And Garnett, I mean, that was a strong class. And I'm missing some guys. Sharif Abdul Rahim was in that game. Mm -hmm. Garnett was head and shoulders above everybody that game. I mean, his pants was sagging. He had the tape in his ear because they just all got their ears pierced. But he was getting rebounds. He was pushing up the floor. Like, you knew, like, all right, this guy is different. Mm Mm-hmm. I didn't see like the dominant performances from Bailey and Flag. But anyway, Bailey to me plays like I know I'm gonna get some flack for this. T Mac, when T Mac lost some of his athleticism when his back was tight and he was just shooting, I mean, he was still scoring. Don't get me wrong, he was still capable of getting you 25, 30 a night, but he was a little bit more predictable because. He was getting to his one dribble pull up, elevating over the top, and he was shooting all jumpers instead of mixing up between jumpers and his freakish athleticism. Bailey plays like T Mac with a tight back to me. All right. So you mentioned 6'9, plays like a guy with a tight back. That sounds like Michael Porter Jr. to me. I think he got a little more. Where? I mean, like. Here's one thing. All right. So let me get this off real quick. Again, this is not slander. This is just what I've seen. It's 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 April, man. Like there's a lot of time between now and the 2025 draft. I watched some of Ace Bailey's high school tape, and obviously, again, the talent's obviously there, but he took some of the worst shots ever. And it was again, like you said, contested pull up, contested pull up, contested pull up, and. I get it. You know, at the high school level, the big dog got to do what the big dog has to do. But, and again, just real quick in this comparison, and I know you mentioned like Trey Johnson. Every time I watched Trey Johnson play in high school, it was easy. It came easy to him. He never forced anything. He yeah. picked his spots. You look up, he had 21. From what I've seen from Ace Bailey, it looks, it just, everything looks tough. Now, he did have a good move on the baseline. I don't know if that was in the scrimmage or the actual game, but it's just like, that's not, that, that was it. And like, he just looks like a good shooter with great size. is going to take a bunch of tough shots. And some people are saying that's similar to Jason Tatum. I didn't see Tatum in his game, but I, Tatum, I get where they're coming from. But Tatum had elbow work at Duke. And I'm not saying Bailey doesn't have it. And again, you know, you playing with... It was with, elbow work, short yeah, court, or iso yeah, logo stuff. Yeah, it looked like Carmelo type stuff. Yeah. Right? So if you sit here and say, uh, you know, Tatum transitioned from elbow work to, you know, a ball handling, playmaking wing, I get it. But just from what I've seen from uh, Bailey right now, it just looks like stiff two drill pull up. Pull up. And again, crossover, pull up. Yeah, yeah. And then somebody picked him at the top of the key. Like, they sat on the crossover. And again, it's two games, man. I'm not trying to overreact. I just want to I want to see, like, ball handling, get to the rim. Because we know he's a great athlete. And it'd just be interesting to see how he transitions his game from high uh, school. I think it was Queen. School. I think it was Derek Queen. Was he, Queen? He, had, he had quite a few cookies where guys tried to, you know – I saw him at the top of the key. Like he's got really good hands. I think it was, I think it was Derek Queen. Um, now let me get on the flag. So I have issues with him too. Now he's gonna stuff the stat sheet because he's extremely talented. But again, we overreact if this is an overreaction to a scrimmage and a and a game, he could not create his shot. He could not create his own shot. And the shot creation that you see from him at the lower level. It's probably yeah. because it was guys his age, right? But now he's classed up, and you see, like, I didn't see the handle that I saw in EYBL, right? Yeah. I, I saw him shoot a couple threes, and he made, uh, again, I'm, I'm blurring my games, but I saw him make a couple, but, like. You're bailing the defense out of your Cooper flag, and you're shooting threes. Thank you. I, I ultimately think he's going to be a play finisher. I think. I agree. <laughs> I think right now. You know, he's showing he can handle, yada, yada, yada. But I think once he gets to college, it's going to be like, hey, finish plays. We're trying to win games. We're not necessarily trying to let you showcase everything you can do. Get on mm-hmm. this block. <laughs> Catch these lobs. Be well, this wait, 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 hold on now. Now, how's he going to get on the block with Malooch down there, too? Well, no, I mean, I mean, Duke's always figured out ways. Not maybe they? the best ways. <laughs> but Have they, they figured it out? They always, I mean, like... 
Lively, somebody had to sacrifice. I didn't think Lively and Filipowski was a good fit, but Lively ended up being a lottery pick. Um, I'm I mean, talking about was, for the, the team success. Like, guys are going to go wherever they're going to go, but like... Yeah, team success, I mean, they're still successful. I mean, they're not... They're not, not Dukes? When's the last time they won a national championship? I don't know. They just went to the Final Four with Bancaro, so, you know. Yeah. And, and college basketball, you're kind of more so judged on final fours that's true so they just went and then elite eight this year but dj burns <laughs> punish filipowski but no i just think he's going to be able to impact games with his athleticism but he's going to be a play finisher and i just think they're going to scale down the stuff that he's trying to do because again i it's almost like he's trying to prove to people that he can shoot if you're cooper flag there's no need, at least in my opinion, for you to be shooting pull up threes and shooting four he's three pointers to, in the he's game. A three off the dribble in the pick and roll. I, that was the one he made, though. I mean, yeah. His touch looks kind of wonky to me. What's well, because his arm is way over here? Again, you're bailing guys out. Dominate the game in the paint and just, yeah, if they can't stop it, they can't stop it. All right, when we return, I want to talk about a few other guys that, that really caught my attention. Carter Knox is a guy that I like, and I've been a fan of his since I saw him in live at OTE. But I want to talk about Ian Jackson. I want to get your thoughts on Ian Jackson. He put up 21 shots in 25 minutes. Was it 21 or 23? I got nine of 21 from the floor. Okay. And then I'll talk about, obviously, Dylan Harper and Boogie Fland. But before we get into the last segment, let's talk about Fire TV because it is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire Stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV so whether it is the opening weekend for Major League Baseball, the NCAA tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. And Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. And Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all of the latest in the world of sports, whether it's March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, lots more. And not to mention, they have great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. So check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, I think you should. And trust me on this. So to learn more, visit Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. All right, last segment, Ian Jackson. What were, what were your thoughts on Ian Jackson? Man, that that dude is not gun shy at all. <laughs> no. uh, he he forced the issue, man. And is you know he was productive and like I get it, but twenty three shots. He was a... four for fourteen midway through the third. But I and I actually like him. I like that. Why is that? You well, go ahead. He's a guy that you know is going to make an impact somehow. Even if he's off, he's going to find a way to make an impact. I mean, I like his motor. I like his size and his ability to make plays out of pick and roll. I thought he showed some flashy handling, even though, I mean, like the people thought he dropped. Um, Ace it looked Bailey. like he dropped Ace Bailey. <laughs> It looked like he dropped him, but he the commentators. Drop him. It was, I mean, you know, I mean, like to me, it was a drop, but it may have been a little push. But nah, if, you, if I push you, I still dropped you. <laughs> it, it was, it was, it was, it was subtle, but he had a big second half. And I just, I like the fact that he was relentless. He was attacking. I think you could do some stuff with him because he's has good size. I don't know if he's a, a point guard. Like I, I know at one point they were trying to make him out to be a point guard. But I do think he is a guy that can make plays out of pick and roll. So I actually like him. I think he's going to be good. <laughs> What's funny is, you know, this is probably a hot take, but what if he just like starts to remind those Carolina fans of Caleb Love again with his uh, 
forcing the issue, lack of efficiency. I mean, it'll be interesting to see how that works. Uh, I'd, I'd be I was willing more... to bet he doesn't shoot below 40% for three consecutive seasons. That's tough <laughs> to be, do. He might not be there for three consecutive seasons. I know. That's the thing. That's tough to do because Caleb yeah. Love, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a bucket. I mean, I've never seen anybody that is more feast or famine than Caleb Love. He can look like a lottery pick or he can look like – just the biggest chucker in the world. And I still like his game. I, I still do. I was more impressed with uh Boogie Flan than I was uh Ian Jackson. Yeah. I Boogie. like Boogie Flan. He gives me uh some some Malik Monk type vibes. I like him you in pick Malik? and roll. He's I not as Malik, explosive, is, but he's Monk a was in pick and roll though. What? When was Malik Monk in pick and roll? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about now. Malik Monk is the secondary ball handler for the Kings right now. I mean, after okay, he, he I, I was carries thinking like Malik no, I'm Monk. I'm not talking about Kentucky. Kentucky. I'm talking about like right now. He he carries uh, Malik Monk carries the offense when uh, Fox is out and Sabonis is out. Like he's one of the best pick and roll basketball players. I think. I mean, stat guys are gonna come for me, but like he's the man in pick and roll in Sacramento. But. Like I I like Boogie Flan, man. I don't think he forces it too much, but he's still aggressive. Good, good stroke. Um he was kind of locking in on the roll, man, on pick and rolls. And that's just something you can you can learn from. But like he had the to me, he had the the good combination of aggression and trying to production. get everybody else involved. Yeah. yeah. And and also production. Yeah, he has 17 points, five rebounds, three assists. I believe he's going to Kentucky. I believe that's where he's going. I believe that's where he's going to Kentucky. I could be wrong. I look at what, right, what. What are your thoughts on the guy that actually won MVP, Dylan Harper? He's just a good basketball player, man. It's you know, Hooper, Hooper. It's crazy. Everybody that's left-handed is uh supposed to be Jalen Brunson now, but he's like, isn't he like six five like his father? Dylan Harper? He definitely is. He definitely did not get his dad's athleticism. No, 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 no. And that may be his, uh, <laughs> I guess if you want to knock him on something, that may be his biggest issue. But, again, athleticism is in. Eh, I mean, having a great first step is great, but having pace is better to me. Yeah. He's more athletic than his brother. Yes, but his brother is like a, is a pure three. Actually, his brother might be a three and a half. Yeah, why his brother is a bucket yeah. though. Yeah. But yeah, Boogie Flint is going to Kentucky. I, I mean, I knew it, but for some reason, just in the middle of saying, I was like, I had a little bit of doubt. He kind of reminded me of a, a a a scaled down version of Dillingham. Not as shifty, but nah, you know, a thin, I'm not seeing a, that way. No, I mean, but like a, a thin guard, super confident, can get to his spots and pull up, good shooter. I mean, like not I mean, a lot of people when they think of Dillingham, they think of I uh, Shifty Rob. He showed. I mean, he showed it this year, but he was definitely scaled down from what he was when he when he was in high school. But Boogie just kind of gives me that small guard that can create his own shot. He threw the best pass of the night, like that that dime he threw was in traffic. It, it was pretty crazy. I got to look at it again. But yeah, Harper. I mean, he got off to a fast start, mm -hmm. and I mean, he had like five points in probably like the first three minutes. I thought he was the best player on the floor. He's a shot maker. He's got a high IQ. He can pass. I mean, he just seemed very, very polished, which is something that you would expect from a son of a pro and the younger mm -hmm. brother of a pro. He just, it's, I could say the same about Carter Knox. I just felt like they were very polished and had a very mature game. Not wild shot selection, not like wowing you with just anything extra, just efficient with what they do, get to their spots, knock down open shots. And I, and I actually like that about them. What did you think about VJ Edgecombe? I, I like him. Now, on paper, he was four of eight from the floor, had nine points. He had five turnovers, so he was a little wild. But I like the athleticism, had some really good blocks. Um. He yeah, I just he was a guy man. just like he was someone that when I watch him, he can like drive to the rim and let's say he passes it out to somebody else, but it's like he catches my attention just with the way he moves. Like there's something about the way he moves at that size that's very intriguing. But I like the athleticism, got a little bit of 
Stacy Augman plastic man in him where he's just like very like acrobatic in the air. I'm not saying he is Stacy Augman, but just the way it's it's kind of like he's very like acrobatic and flexible in the air. So I think he's gonna be interesting. I'm just curious to see how he how he uh fits in with Baylor. Um yeah, <laughs> that's all I can say. I'm just curious to see how that works out. And right now, before I, uh, I let you talk, you don't know how guys are going to fit in with the school they're at because it's like with this transfer portal, you have you used to be able to say, all right, such and such is gone. I can plug this freshman in. And then this point guard was there for two years. He's going to step up and be the starting point guard. Now you like you have no idea with the transfer portal. You don't know which mm. high ranking mid major guard is going to come in and start. So it's it makes it kind of difficult to kind of predict hey. where guys are going to be. Speaking of that, there had been the rumors that Liam McNeely was going to go to Kansas. Hey, after the the week that Kansas has had, do you still entertain Kansas? Again, I know he's bigger than well, those who guys. Who else they got? I know they got uh, Zeke they Mayo. Just, uh, Zeke Mayo. Yep. And then uh, Riley Cool. Oh, yeah. I forget. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, Dewan Harris, he not leaving anytime soon. What for? Right? And, then, and they still so, got El Marco. So that's what I was wondering. Does that mean El Marco has El Marco might already... be the odd man out. Or does that mean he's already put his name in the portal in a sense and they haven't talked about it? Because that backcourt is hey. crowded. Hey, look, El Marco. Hey, man. Might be that time. But no, uh, just... El Marco and what's my man's name at Providence? <laughs> they need to go to uh, school together. Garvey Duall? <laughs> yeah, they need, they need yeah. to figure out a way. Yeah, Call yeah, some yeah, coach. Yeah. Actually, go to OU. OU's backcourt is bone dry <laughs> right now. Everybody left. Yeah. So I Dude, like I there. say, Oklahoma State, that whole team basically left too. Yeah. So I mean, there's opportunities. You just got to do your research. You got to do your homework. Uh, I don't. The Muslim um sign with Arkansas is that official? I mean, USC. I haven't heard that. I I don't know if that was man. It's hard April first, man, because you know the yeah, timeline between some trash out there. Uh, I want to talk about you... a few guys that go that ahead. like didn't play well, and I mean we don't have to spend too much time on them. Like we mentioned, McNeely was 0 for 6. You had um, Isaiah Evans, who I remember like he, Gavoni caught some flack because he kind of mm. like. Sound like he was hating. Yeah, he was a little brutal on him, you know, off of uh, a difficult performance. He was 0 for 6 also. He was 0 for 4 from 3. And then Jalil Bethea, who a lot of people he, he really, really like. He was yeah, he 1 for 5, one for, 1 for 3. He only played 14 minutes. But those guys struggled. <laughs> yeah. So what what are your thoughts on them, not just based off of the game, but based off the scrimmages? Yeah, like you said, um, Bethea, he didn't he didn't play well. And, you know, he was somebody that I kept hearing about, hearing about. I was looking forward to uh seeing him go. I remember uh the Gavoni tweet and how that went. And like I said, there's gonna be a lot of cooks in the kitchen at Duke too. Uh shoot. They some people think Tyrese Proctor may come back. He's got to come back. I mean, it, it would help him out because he'd be the only point guard on that team. He, he's got to come back, man. You can't leave college on an 0 for 9. <laughs> hey, man, 0 for 9. Look. And I mean, it's, I don't even know if he's a lot to get drafted. So you, you learn from Trevor Kills. Call Trevor Kills. Be like, Trevor, what should I do? Trevor probably be like, hey, you need to stay in school because, <laughs> because man, riding these buses between Sioux Falls and. <laughs> <laughs> Sioux Falls and uh, Des Moines, man, you fly on a plane in Duke. So I, I think he should go to school or return to school, come back. And I, I think that he'll be better. He'll, he'll have the athletes. Like, I, I feel like Duke just wasn't athletic this year. who will have some athletes. who will have some vertical lob threats. To he get had the sheer to. point guard duties. Yeah. And so, and then if he can just – Knock down open jumpers, which I think he's capable of. So I think he should return to school. Let me ask you a question, Ralph. What did you think of Donovan Freeman? He, he, um, I know there was one shot lives. that he, there was one shot that he made that I liked, but I do like the positional size. It was only, he was two for four, but I do think that, you know, the positional size and that shooting, I do think that you have something there. 
the commentators, uh, what's my man? And they went to Virginia. Corey. Corey Alexander. Corey Alexander. Uh, in the scrimmage, he kept mentioning that he was the guy that NBA scouts were like, okay, who is he? Who is he? Yeah. He may not have come with the same fanfare as the other guys, but obviously I think he's like 6'9", and the jump shot looks great. So um, it's a lot to be excited about with this class, man. Now, I'm not going to overreact too much. Uh, over a scrimmage in a game, but you know, I am taking note of some things. Look like some guys were kind of struggling to get their stuff off. Um, and then to just see, you know, you can get better from now between, you know, between now and when the season starts. But yeah, man, it's going to be real interesting. It's going to be fun, but you know, we still got work to do in 2024. Well, that wraps up this episode again. This was an episode strictly dedicated to the 2024 McDonald's All American game. Again, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, like, share, comment, click the bell so you can be notified every time we drop. And also, subscribe to NBABigBoard.com. It is my newsletter. I just dropped an article on Dink Pate. Dink Pate is a guy who I think would have played the McDonald's game. It's kind of left in limbo since the NBA decided to shut down the Ignite. Go back a few weeks so you can see an episode that James and I did. We kind of had a debate on that whole situation or that whole topic. Once again, it's Raphael with my brother James, and we are out of here.